So now I'm going to pick up a call from Jimmy in New York. Jimmy, who wants to talk about this thing, apparently? Yeah, that's Simba behind your back. That's Simba. It's Titanic. What? I, ca- I, yeah, I cannot hear you. Do you hear me now? Hello? You know, you're very quiet. Hello? I, I Hello? can hear you, but only barely. Yeah, I'm just talking about the symbol behind your back. That, that symbol behind it is satanic. Yes, the symbol behind me is satanic, Hello? yes. So, it's special God, but how can we have a satanic symbol? It makes no sense. Because when a Morgan does these shows for me, he can't figure out how to make my green screen work. Well, how can you mislead him to the hell? Why are you doing that? That's not that's not cool. That's, 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 I'm sorry, what? That's, 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 what he's saying why is... Why are you mislead people to hell? Why... There he goes. Okay, now I can hear you. Why are you mislead Jimmy, say that again. Why are you mislead people to hell? Why, you... why, you why to what hell? now? I'm hearing the words why to hell like over and over again. I say, why are you misleading people? Why are you, why are you lying to people? Why are you misleading people to hell? Why are you why something are you to hell? hell? <clears throat> Aaron, Believe I think Believe what he's it. saying is, Believe if you are, hang on just a second. I'm going to do you a favor, Jimmy. He's asking, why are you broadcasting yourself with a satanic symbol behind your head? That's not cool, man. I think that's what the point was. How did I do, oh, Jimmy? Because... Yeah, because like you say, you, don't, you do not believe. Without a proper phone connection, this conversation is near impossible. Go ahead and answer, though. I mean, a lot of people are curious. What's up with the Satan thing? Aaron, you atheist. Well, <laughs> I mean... Uh, a couple years back, a few years back now, I uh, I paid twenty five dollars for membership to the Satanic Temple because I wanted to support their defense of our First Amendment. Uh, they were defending uh, freedom of religion in our Constitution, and I thought that they were uh, making admir- admirable inroads in that. So I joined the Satanic Temple. If you look them up on their uh, frequently asked questions or FAQs, you will find that the Satanic Temple does not believe in any Satan. They don't believe in a literal Satan. They don't believe in anything supernatural, and nor do I. But it's kind of cool, and so that's what I like about it. It's uh, interesting. A lot of people will come to me and say, why would you like Lucian Greaves at the Satanic Temple and other Satanists are friends of mine. They are non-theistic Satanists. For them, Satan represents the rejection of tyranny and independent thought yep. and the refusal to be governed in, uh, by authoritarians. And um, so Satan for them is partially an aesthetic. It's kind of, uh, I've, I've heard some people say that how Satanists, many of them are kind of Halloween-y sort of folk, and they enjoy sort of adorning their lives in that kind of uh, imagery, sometimes even mythology, without believing that those myths are real. Uh, I'm interested, too, whenever I speak to a lot of, the, especially the more moderate or progressive Christians, and I say, what do you think about these tenets? And Aaron is immediately on to me, and he knows where I'm going, but bear with me, brother. The seven fundamental tenets, and I will read them, and I'm going to read them here because we have a moment. One should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason. The struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. The freedoms of others should be respected, including freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Belief should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that may have been caused. And finally, 
Every tenet is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility and action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. I will present these without any context beyond what they are to devout Christians. And it's uncommonly, I say it's very common, but it's interesting how often they're like, well, those are, yeah, I agree with those. I, I think that's lovely. And then you tell them, hey, <laughs> uh, you, you just agreed with the seven fundamental tenets of the satanic temple and they lose their freaking minds. But I think that speaks also to, you know, the satanic temple in that way represents your value system. Would that be accurate, Aaron? Or is that too big a stretch for oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple of tenets in there that I especially embrace. The, the latter one, the, the final one, uh, isn't of all that much importance to me, but the, some of the others, there's a, there's a, there's a notion there about forgiveness that if you now of course you have to realize you done fucked up that's kind of a requirement but when you come forward and you realize you know that i i shouldn't have done or said that this was wrong i look at my own life and i i remember that i would have to, if i could have met myself as a young man and i'm and i'm young i'm glad that the young near me is gone but if i could, i could have met myself as a young man we, we would not get along he was he was an ass, but uh, I, I appreciate that uh, that the Satanic Temple those tenants offer that hey if you if you realize that that this was on you and that you should make atonement for that well then we're gonna we're gonna begin to extend some forgiveness for you. It goes completely against the notion of you know well you're uh, you know you you left us you just want to cancel everybody. When in fact, it's the people on the right who want to, you know, cancel people the moment you don't support Trump anymore. But, but so that's one of the things that I admire about the same attendance. And there's just the other things about uh, Satanism, of course, the fashion. I've just always dressed this way. It's nice to have an excuse now. <laughs> and I so I noticed that somebody in the in the chat comments. Um, that, that who said that, uh, that that hell is not cool? Um, there is no hell. It's not like there's a mystery. It's not like there's a possibility. There is no hell. Full stop. We don't have souls. So, and we we have plenty. It's not just that we don't have that we don't have any evidence of souls right exactly where we would have it if they were real. It's that we have so much evidence against souls and not having any evidence of souls, neither in physics, according to Sean Carroll, neither in neuroscience, according to Patricia Churchland and Daniel Dennett, and not in, uh, um, that was in neurophilosophy and in neuroscience either, according to a half a dozen neuroscientists that I've talked to. It's not just that we don't have any support for these things, it's we, that we have so much evidence against them that we can now safely say there is no immaterial ghost-like aspect of yourself that rises out of the body when you die. You are the meat bag that you are, and there's, there's no ghost in the machine. So there's no afterlife to go to because there's no thing to go to it. And hell was the first thing I had to let go of as a child because I realized that hell is inconsistent with God. Now, when people tell you how great heaven is, they realize that, you know, people will start thinking about heaven. Well, if I just, uh, if I if I meet the metric, then I'll go to heaven. And they start thinking about heaven. And it doesn't take two or three minutes before you start finding huge problems with heaven. So the carrot's not working. We have to give them the stick. So then they made up heaven, or excuse me, they made up hell. And hell was meant to terrify anybody that tried to think too long about heaven, because it doesn't matter how long you think about hell, it still sucks, right? except strangely when you compare it to heaven hell is hell heaven and hell are so off the chart ridiculous dichotomies with no understanding of nuance there's no extenuating circumstances there's no 
there, there's no accounting for all the things that you did good weighed against all the things that you did bad. There's just like a tipping scale. Well, it's you you went one one increment over the line, so now you get eternal damnation, where you will be mercilessly and savagely tortured daily for all eternity forever and ever and ever as viciously as anything ever could be this is not what a real god would allow this concept is the invention obviously of storytellers who got upset that hey people aren't buying my bullshit story that i want them to believe let me tell them a horror aspect of it that'll scare them into believing it that's obviously all it is there is no hell we have no souls there is no afterlife get the fuck over it it's not possible under any circumstances there's 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 just no reality in which hell hell is a thing done i'm interested in um you know it's like the caller jimmy who is no longer with us by the way but very disturbed at the imagery of Satan behind you. And I find that's really fascinating. You know, it took me a long time, a couple of years to actually get over my own fear of hell. It's one of the last things when I came out of Christianity that I was able to let go of. But it took a while because, you know, they, they brand those fears in pretty deep. And you have this emotional, visceral reaction. You're terrified in some ways. What if I get it wrong? What if I am wrong? What if everybody else who's praying for me is right? And those types of things. And it took me a while to get over all of that and get to a point where, you know, I wasn't afraid of the monster in the closet. It's amazing. I did a speech in Denver maybe 10 years ago. And at the end, just to show that I was no longer afraid, I did a, a prayer to Satan. I actually put a satanic image up on the big screen and I'm like, prove yourself. I will give my soul to you and I will burn for all eternity. If you will manifest yourself, I will sacrifice myself to prove that Satan does exist. If you will arrive here and, uh, and prove that to the audience. And there were some people who flipped out. I mean, it's, they weren't mad, but it just weirded them out because it was still kind of there. I'm reminded of, uh, when people ask me about how to get over the, the fear of the devil and this devilish imagery and how it still flips some people out, it's dissonant and seems evil. And I tell them the story of, uh, I call him my grandkid, but uh, he's um, kind of my step grandkid, I guess, Natalie's grandchild. And uh, he used to come over on Halloween and we always decorate every year. And uh, when he was five, I had this giant eight foot scary figure in the porch and he was pretty terrifying. He had a skull face and he had orange eyes and he had white hair that came back. And of course he had this metallic body, but you would plug him in and he would speak and he would do these other weenie things. And, and he was pretty intense for a, a young kid. So we, you know, we obviously didn't like, you know, we weren't trying to scare him, but he was weird. He was genuinely scared of it. And so when he would come over, we, we would take it off of the porch and we would hide it back in Natalie's office downstairs so it wouldn't, it wouldn't frighten him. And the next year when I decorated, I had an epiphany. And so I had him there when I assembled it. And I said, hey, check this out. And it was all in a box. All right, so the, here's the feet. We're going to put these in. There's a little bar, and it pops in there. And look, here's an electrical cord, and then we're going to put his legs. And here, this is all made of foam. You see, it's nothing to be afraid of. And this, this is a speaker, and it's got a recording in it. It's not really a voice. Some actor did that somewhere. And that's some of what I do on ha Halloween. I put together shows, and I make voices just like this person did. And look, here's the head. Here, why don't you help me? I'll lift you up, and you put the head on the top. And... Um, and then we both put the scary guy out on the front porch together. But because he got a chance to look behind the curtain, he got a chance to see how it was constructed and how it would be deconstructed. It demystified it. And he was no longer afraid. And it was so remarkable because the next time he came over, he walked up as proud as he could be. And he had his chest just popped out. And he goes, I'm not afraid of the scary guy anymore big smile on his face. And I think the same thing works with hell. 
When we go back and we understand how hell was part of many religious mythologies, how hell has been used to control the masses, how hell makes no sense morally, logistically, etc. If you begin to reverse engineer it, it takes the teeth out of it. And then you can look it in the, in the face and say, I'm not afraid of you anymore. And that's, uh, that's the analogy I like to use. Deconstruct it, understand it. Once you see how it all works, then it's no longer terrifying to you. At least that's my hope. So, See, that's why you're the humanitarian here, because you're able to tell enduring <laughs> stories like that. I mean, what was my answer? There is no hell. Shut the fuck up, stupid. And then you come in. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. Right? <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, Pokemon master and executive producer on the line. Would you like to support a specific show on the line or the line in general? There are special tiers on our Patreon and in our channel memberships. You can do just that. By the way, you could consider leaving a super thanks down below. You could also like, subscribe and leave a regular comment. All of these are great. Now, I'm going to get back to crushing loneliness. But while I do that, why don't you check out one of these?